Welcome to episode 10 of Microbrews, the final video in my new video series on how to make the best use of a microscope in your home or craft brewery. But before I get into this video's topic, I'd like to invite you to suggest topics for a second season of Microbrews. If there is an assay or microscopy topic you'd like to see covered, please leave a comment below. In this episode, I'm going to go over why you may want to use digital imaging to keep a permanent record of your brewery samples. I'll show you some options for capturing digital images through your microscope, and I'll give you a brief demo of how a free software package can be used to perform more rigorous yeast counts uh, using a hemocytometer. For most home brewers, it may seem like there's no reason to use digital imaging other than posting selfies to social media. But depending on what kind of brewing you do, there may be more uses than social media glory. And for commercial brewers, there's a number of very good reasons you may want to employ digital imaging. Digital images provide a permanent visual record of your yeast sample. Images of tripan blue or iodine stained cells may help to diagnose fermentation issues, while changes in cell morphology may indicate contamination with another yeast strain. If you're involved in fermenting mixed fermentations, you may actually be able to determine roughly where in the fermentation process uh, a particular beer is based on the presence or absence of certain bacteria or certain types of yeast. And while it's not an issue we like to think of, uh, permanent visual records such as these may be useful if a brewery needs to prove the presence of contamination, subpar yeast counts, or poor yeast quality when dealing with a yeast supplier. There are a number of dedicated digital cameras available for taking images through the ocular of your microscope. These include cameras which mount onto the ocular itself, cameras which replace an ocular on your microscope, and some microscopes even have a built-in camera. However, most of these dedicated cameras are expensive, their image quality is not necessarily all that good, and in fact, pretty much any cell phone less than five-year-olds will probably have a camera of equal or greater quality than what you'll see in most of these microscope-specific systems. Luckily, there's a variety of free plans for cheap 3D printed mounts that allow you to easily attach a cell phone to the ocular of your microscope. I use the model shown here extensively. In fact, I've made dozens of these because I use them in a course that I teach. And I've included a link to plans uh, for this particular mount in the video description. The only downside to this mount is that phones that have an off-center camera can be difficult to mount uh, in a stable fashion. So to help with this, I've designed a longer armature uh, that you use to replace the bottom mount. And this improves the stability of phones that have a side-mounted camera. So the link for both the camera mount as well as for my modified armature can be found in the video description. When capturing photos, it's important to keep your goal in mind. If you're merely posting photos to social media, then looking for the best field of view is the thing that you want to do. However, if you're trying to achieve specific uh, information, like the distribution of different yeast shapes within a sample, uh, a good measure of vitality or viability, you need to be a little more rigorous in the approach to capturing images. And this is because if you're picking the fields of view that look the best, you may be biasing your samples. So you should come up with some way of imaging three to five different areas on a sample where your selection of the regions that you image is somewhat random. This will ensure that you accurately represent what is present in your sample and helps to eliminate any biases you may introduce if you're only picking single fields. If you're keeping images for archival purposes, it's best to name the files in a way which makes it easy to link them to a specific sample or brew day. Personally, I like to name my files by date, as if you name your files by year, month, day, the files will auto-sort in ascending order on your computer system. Of course, you can add additional descriptors after the date in the file name to make it easier to link the image file to a particular brew or other feature. Now, there's a lot of things you can do with digital images, but probably the most useful application is performing more vigorous cell counts. This is particularly useful if you're dealing with a mixed fermentation where you're trying to count the numbers of individual types of organisms within a sample. These types of counts, as well as many other forms of image analysis, can be performed in Fiji, a free scientific image processing package. This package has many plugins which allow for a broad range of image analysis procedures to be performed. It's even scriptable to allow for semi-automated image analysis. In this example, I'm going to use an image of tripan blue stained yeast on a hemocytometer plus the cell counting plugin to count live versus dead yeast cells in a sample. This is obviously a simple version of what we could actually do with this particular plugin, but it will show you how this plugin works and how to use it properly. So to start, open an image and then open the cell counter plugin. 
The plugin can be found under the Plugins menu within the Analyze submenu. First click Initialize, which will start the counter. Click on Type 1 and then on the Rename button and name the clicker something meaningful. So in this case I'm counting live cells, so I'm going to name the clicker Live. Next, click on each live cell in the hemocytometer image following the rules for proper hemocytometer counts. If you're unfamiliar with using a hemocytometer, please see video 8 of microbrews. Once you're done counting live cells, click on type 2 and rename it to dead. Begin clicking on the dead cells. As you can see, a different color marker is used, making it easy to ensure that you have not made any errors and that you're not double counting cells. Now if you make an error, you can simply create a third or fourth counter to reassign miscounted cells to the correct category. So for example here, I'm creating a counter of live to dead, or in other words, cells that I counted as live that in fact were dead. When you're done counting, click results. The results can then be copied into Excel or another program, or even just saved as a comma-separated value table. As with the images, these results files can be stored as part of your permanent record. Of course, if counting a mixed fermentation sample, you could create different counters for each visibly different yeast or bacteria. So you could have Saccharomyces, Britannomyces, Lactobacillus, and Pediococcus counters. So this was a very basic and quick intro into using digital imaging and image analysis within your brewery. This is obviously just a starting point, and there are many other forms of analysis you can perform and many other things you may want to do with digital images. If you're interested in learning more about image processing in Fiji itself, there's an excellent free online course offered through edX that can guide you through more advanced forms of image analysis. I've included a link to this course in the video description below. So thank you for joining me in the Microbrew series. I hope you found it useful and interesting. But this may not be the end of Microbrews. If you have a method, concept, or topic you would like for me to cover, please leave it in a comment below. If there's enough interest on a second season of Microbrews, I'll happily put together another season driven entirely by viewer requests. Thank you again for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed the series.